Hey guys, I wanted to take a few minutes to make this video and explain to you guys what we do each year to make sure our horses don't have a grass founder. Some of you guys know that our boy Chino contracted Lyme disease and had a really rough summer. He ended up having some laminitis. It wasn't from grass, it was from the Lyme disease attacking his gut. He's well on the way to recovery now, but it made me think about all the things that we do each year to make sure that our horses don't founder or get laminitis because they're on grass all day long. So the first thing we do is we wait for adequate grass growth. We wait for spring grass to reach a height of at least six inches before we allow the horses onto the field each spring. I have this handy dandy little stick and it has it taped off um, that this is the level the grass has to be before it can be healthy for our horses. Allowing the horses to graze before the grass is long enough subjects them to higher than normal sugar levels and it also causes damage to the grass itself. I've explained that in a lot of our YouTube channel videos and we get a lot of flack for it. A lot of people don't understand that when the grass is short it can truly be full of sugar which can be detrimental to an older horse or, or a horse that's overweight. We also make changes to their diet really, really slowly. We are especially mindful in the early spring when sugars in the grass are high. We always go really slowly putting horses out on the grass at the start of every season. Another thing that we do throughout the entire season is we assess their weight constantly. We look for fat deposits on their hind quarters. And we look for a crusty neck. especially if the crest is really hard and tight. As you can see, this guy has a really nice neck for being at the end of the summer and his body condition is good and he doesn't have a lot of fat deposits anywhere. But if we do find a horse that seems to be getting a little bit chubby, we're always monitoring their weight and we're making changes to how long they graze if need be. At first glance, Penny does look a little bit chubby in her belly, but her crest looks nice and small and not hard, and she doesn't have a lot of fat deposit on her hind end. If we do notice any of these changes in our horse, especially the crusty neck, we have used grazing muzzles in the past just for short times, especially in the early spring, because we've needed to limit the amount of grass that our horse was getting because she was showing risk factors. Fortunately, we were able to take the grazing muzzle off just a short while after we started it. Her crest started to go down and everything was good. Like I said before, the sugar in early spring grass is really, really high and some horses don't need to eat a lot of grass before they start to get that crusty neck. We don't love the use of grazing muzzles. For us, they're just a tool, a preventative that we may need at times because our herd is an aging herd. We, most of our horses are getting older and we want to be especially mindful of them. I thought it could be really useful for me to make a video explaining the things that we do because laminitis is not picky. Laminitis is truly a worry for all horse owners that have their horses on grass. It can be a super scary situation, but if you're prepared and you know what to look for and you know how to manage horses on grass, it can be a lot less scary. So another thing that we do is we feed our horses a magnesium supplement through the entire grass growing season. Magnesium helps to protect against inflammation and inflammation weakens the lamini. So we give our horses a magnesium supplement all summer long while they are on grass. Magnesium also helps to regulate blood sugar. And did you know that horses with laminitis often have low levels of magnesium? We are relatively new to horses. I know that a trained horse person is always out there, always assessing their herd every single day. And it's something that I've become accustomed to and something that I do every single day. It can be as easy as noticing any changes in your horse when they come off the grass each night and into the barn and noticing little changes before they become foot sore can make the difference between life and death for a horse with laminitis. Now that I've shared with you guys what we do to prevent laminitis and founder in our horses, I'd like to know if there's something that you think I've missed or do you do something differently? Comment below your tips and tricks because sharing knowledge is the best way to keep all of our horses safe. Don't you know that you're beautiful Just the